Hi everyone, um, today I'm going to talk about the anatomy of the skull and I'm going to talk you through the bones of the skull from both kind of the frontal view and um, the lateral view. So um, here we have uh, the skull from this frontal view. It's kind of like a three quarter view and I like this because it allows us to see right into the orbit so we can really see what kind of bones are located in um, that orbit. So what I've done to make things a little bit easier is I've kind of drawn an outline around um, kind of the, the edges of the bones so we can see what's going on here. And then what I'm going to do is that in um, this kind of bright green color, I'm going to outline the, um, the divisions between each of the bones. Right? And we'll kind of start with uh, the orbit because that's kind of the hardest part. All right, so right above the nose, you're going to have the two uh, nasal bones, which um, I've kind of drawn their divisions here. I'm going to label them in this orange, and we'll label them with just an N for, uh, N for nasal. All right, the two nasal bones, one um, on either side right on top of the nose. Okay. Then if we go back over to this green, we're going to have a kind of a border of a bone right there that kind of comes down. And the next bone that we can really talk about is the, um, the bone of the upper cheek. That is going to be the maxilla bone. And his divisions kind of look like this and like that. Okay, so this bone of the upper cheek, that is the maxilla. I'm going to just label that with an M for maxilla. And we also have the maxilla over here. Okay. Um, if we keep going out, this uh, the cheekbone, we're going to have this arch that makes up the cheekbone, kind of going laterally from the maxilla. If we draw the division for that, it's going to be located right there and right there. That um, cheekbone is called the zygomatic, and I'm just going to do a Z for zygomatic. And over on the right side, zygomatic is going to be located right there. Okay, so that is good. Um, uh, if we go ahead and zoom in on the orbit, I'm going to draw out the, the remaining kind of uh, borders or joints between the bones as we kind of zoom in. Use this green. You're going to have a division that kind of comes in right there, a division that kind of comes around like that, and then it goes like that. Okay. Now, we know that, let me go ahead and finish out the different kind of sutures of the bone, all right, that we can see so far. Okay, so before we tackle this orbit, we know the forehead bone, that's going to be the maxilla, or the, the frontal bone. Frontal bone is right here in the forehead, so I'm going to do an F for frontal. Okay. Now. As we go, we go kind of zoom back in on the orbit, you'll notice that the dorsal kind of roof of the orbit is also part of the frontal bone. So I'm also going to label that with an F because that frontal bone really curves on the inside and makes up the dorsal side of the orbit. Now, um, remembering the specific bones of the orbit, um, they come in a very specific order. Next to this nasal bone, which you've already labeled, is going to be a little protrusion or a part of the maxilla. Then we have a tiny little bone next to the maxilla. I'm going to do an L right there because that's part of the lacrimal bone. Tiny little bone on the medial side of the orbit. Next to the lacrimal bone, that's where we're going to have the ethmoid. He also makes up kind of the medial um, wall of the orbit, but going more uh, posterior to the back of the orbit. And then um, you're going to have a pretty substantial bone that makes up um, kind of the deep kind of uh, back of the orbit, but also kind of like the lateral side as you come back out the other direction. This is going to be the sphenoid, so I'm going to label that with an S. Now, right at the border between the ethmoid and the sphenoid, that's where we're going to have some um, substantial kind of holes and foramina that are going to be located inside this orbit. We're going to have a hole right here. That's going to be the most medial hole. I'll label that in a second. That's the optic canal. And then you're going to have two slit-like holes one that extends up kind of superiorly, and another one that extends down kind of posterior like that. 
Those are the orbital fissures, both the superior and the inferior orbital fissures, and they're really um, located inside that sphenoid bone with the optic canal being more medial right at the border between the sphenoid and the ethmoid. I'll label those in a second. Okay, if we keep working out laterally next to the sphenoid bone, that's going to be um, part of the zygomatic because the zygomatic actually curves around and it's going to make the lateral wall of the orbit um, right before it, it kind of emerges. So if we go back to orange, this is also going to be part of the zygomatic. Okay, so if we zoom out, that's kind of the order of the different bones. And um, you can remember this, if you start at the maxilla, which is right here, that's a protrusion of the maxilla. Let me do a better hint than that. There. If you work laterally from the maxilla, it goes M-L-E-S-Z. So maxilla, lacrimal, ethmoid, sphenoid, zygomatic. You can remember that by mean lions eat skinny zebras. Okay, good. Now, if we go over um, to the bones at the side of the head, this little part um, just behind the zygomatic, that's actually also part of the sphenoids. The sphenoids is a pretty substantial bone that makes up a lot of the inner side of the skull, and we can see a part of it right here. Um, the temporal bone is going to make up the lateral side of the head, so I'm going to label that with a T. And then the parietal bone is actually really large. You can't see much of it. That's going to make up the side of the head. And I'm going to label that with a, with a P. Now, down here, the lower jaw, that is going to be the mandible. So I'm going to also label that with an M. Okay. And that's kind of the names of the major bones. Now, because this is a three-quarter view, the right orbit is going to look a little bit different than the left orbit from this view. So if we zoom on the, um, the right orbit, I'm going to go back over to my green. We're going to see that the divisions of the bones kind of look like that. You're going to have the zygomatic that kind of comes out here. You're going to have the sphenoid that kind of wraps around like that. And that's about all that we can see. You can see just a little bit of the superior orbital fissure, which is kind of peeking out like that. You can't see the rest of those holes or the, or the ethmoid because they're just too far um, back. They're too far recessed within the orbit. So to label this, um, we know that this is the zygomatic. Um, when it goes around the corner to the lateral kind of wall of the orbit, that's also the zygomatic. This is going to be the, the sphenoid, S. And then up top, that's just part of the frontal bone. It makes up the roof of the orbit. Great. Now it's time to kind of label some of um, the parts and some of the holes of the skull. I'm going to switch over to this uh, blue color for this. First, we can label a couple of the sutures. So the suture that's made up by the frontal bone connecting with the parietal bone, that's called the coronal suture. I'm going to um, abbreviate that CS. He's located right there. And then the suture that makes up the division between the temporal bone and the parietal bone, that's called the squamous suture. So I'm going to abbreviate that SS. And he is right there. Now, um, there's a couple of foramen and holes that we need to label um, in the inside of the orbit. We know that that more medial kind of uh, circular hole right next to the ethmoid, the border between the ethmoid and the sphenoid, that's your optic canal. He's located right here. Then you're going to have these two slit-like holes. Those are the orbital fissures. You're going to have one that's superior, one of them that's inferior. So I'm going to abbreviate the superior one, the superior orbital fissure. He's located right there. And this um, one that goes inferior, that's the inferior orbital fissure, which is located right there. All right. And again, on this uh, right orbit, you can only see a little bit of the superior orbital Fissure right there. Okay, good. Now there's a couple other fissures that exist on top of the orbit and just below the orbit. And they allow for the passageway of, of arteries and, and um, nerves so that they don't have to go around that corner of the orbit. Um, I'm going to kind of highlight these in the gray. You're going to have this one down here just below the orbit, and you're going to have one right about there just above the orbit. So one right there and one right there. The one above the orbit, that's called the supraorbital foramen. I'm just going to label that, uh, or abbreviate that, supraorbital foramen, SF. Don't mistake that with the superior orbital fissure. This is the supraorbital foramen, foramen. And then down below, this is the infraorbital foramen. So I'm going to abbreviate that, IF, right 
Now, if we jump down to the mandible, the mandible's got a couple of interesting parts that we need to, to learn the, the names of, okay? So this part of the mandible is kind of like this part of the mandible that extends outward. It's like the bottom of your uh, lower jaw. That's called the, um, the body of the mandible. And then this part right here that extends downwards, that's called the ramus. And he's located right there. The mandible has um, two kind of protrusions that um, exist um, near its attachment site to the skull. The part of the mandible that actually um, connects and articulates with the, the skull, that's called the condylar process. I'm going to abbreviate that CP. The little notch between, just next to that condylar process, that's called the condylar notch. Or the, no, 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 excuse me, the mandibular notch. I'm going to abbreviate that MN. And then the next bump is called the coronoid process, and he serves as the attachment site for muscles of the jaw. So this is another CP, which stands for coronoid process. The angle of the mandible is that little, um, you know, bump in the back of your uh, kind of jaw as it starts to extend upwards, right? The division between the body and the ramus. So this is the angle right there. And then we have two uh, foramen. Let me highlight those right here. Those are right at the chin, and those are called the mental foramen. All right, so... I'm just going to abbreviate that, or I'll write it out. Mental brain, right there. Okay. And that's a pretty, uh, that's about it from that view. All right, we can continue to talk about the skull if we switch over to a lateral view, which I'm going to um, do right now. So we switch over to this lateral view. What I've done is, again, I've kind of just um, highlighted some of the, the divisions. So there's just a photograph of the lateral view of the skull, and I've highlighted some of those edges. If we um, start to draw in the divisions between the bones, we can start here at the kind of the nasal cavity and, the, um, and the, uh, the orbit, right? So right above the nose, that's going to be your nasal bone. You're going to have the maxilla next to that. All right, then you're going to have the lacrimal bone that kind of extends in like that, and that extends, um, connects to the ethmoid. Okay, so if we were to, there's a division right there that separates the zygomatic from the temporal. There's a division right here. And it comes like that. Division right there. Division right here, and then finally you got a division right there. Okay, so if we were to label um, some of these divisions that I've already kind of um, highlighted, we'll go back to orange, right? The same color scheme. Number nine, right here, this bone that's going to be the maxilla, which we know is going to be the same right here. That's maxilla right above the nose. That's your nasal bone. In, let me try that again. In. Next to the maxilla, as we kind of extend laterally, or you know, to the left in this case, this is going to be the lacrimal, and then ethmoid. Okay, right above here, the roof of the orbit—that's their frontal bone—and the frontal bone is going to continue up here. So that large bone right there is the frontal bone. Good. We know that the cheekbone is going to be made up by the zygomatic. Okay. Then as we work kind of um, backwards on the side of the head, this is another part of the sphenoid bone. So number 20 is another part of the sphenoid. The sphenoid is a pretty large uh, bone that occupies a big internal structure of the skull. The sides of the, the skull, that's parietal bone. So the parietal bone's um, quite large. And then the, um, or the side, but more superior, that's the parietal bone. And then you have the temporal bone right here. Finally, in the back, that's going to be your occipital bone. We can label some of these uh, sutures now a little bit better. So let me go over to blue again. So this uh, suture right in the middle, that's your coronal suture, formed by the frontal and the parietal bone. The squamous suture is formed by the um, union of the temporal and the parietal. And then the lambdoid suture is formed by the union between the parietal and the occipital, occipital bone. So lambdoid 
suture is right there. Okay. A couple, couple other parts of the bone, specifically this temporal bone, you'll see this um, pretty big protrusion at the bottom of the temporal bone. That's called the mastoid process. And then a pointy kind of protrusion that's just anterior to the mastoid process, that's called the styloid. S-T-Y-L-O-I-D process right there. Okay. And this pretty significant hole, um, that is your ear canal, which is called the external acoustic meatus. So external acoustic meatus is right there. Good. And that's a pretty good overview of the, the lateral part of the bone. I think the only thing that we're missing is just labeling the, the mandible right there. And that should do it. Now, before we kind of end, uh, what I wanted to do is just kind of jump real quick over to a 3D model of the skull. So here you got a 3D model that you can kind of rotate around. And um, the reason I wanted to kind of highlight this is because I'm going to try to focus on that three-quarter view of, um, well, first off, we look at the lateral view, you can really see the nice divisions between um, like the sphenoid and the temporal and the parietal and the frontal, also the zygomatic. But um, the hardest part for students I found is really the inside of the orbit. So I'm going to kind of look at the inside of the orbit from this view and I'm going to highlight uh, some of those divisions. So I'm going to do markup. That allows me to kind of zoom in. And um, let me see here. I'm going to use the same color that we did before. Okay, so if we zoom in, we know that right here, that's going to be the nasal bone, right? Next to the nasal bone, that is going to be the maxilla, which kind of comes down like that, right? Division of the maxilla on this side is right here. Next to the maxilla, that's where we're going to have the lacrimal bone, which is right there. And that's going to connect to the ethmoid, which really extends deep into the orbit and it occupies that um, medial side. Now, the, the optic canal and the, and the superior orbital fissure and the inferior orbital fissure are really going to be a part of the sphenoid bone, which kind of wraps around like that, give or take. And then the zygomatic bone is going to be right there. So if I were to label this, let's go back to orange for labeling. We'll do, or label it in red. You're going to have nasal, maxilla, lacrimal, ethmoid, sphenoid, zygomatic, zygomatic. Okay, this is also maxilla down here. Now just to keep things consistent, if we switched over to black, you're going to have the optic canal right there, the superior orbital fissure that kind of extends up, and the inferior orbital fissure. You can't really see all of them, but he's going to extend down like that. All right. Hopefully that helped clear up some things um, for everyone. You know, as as you kind of try to learn um, the different parts of that that skull. All right. Thank you.